This is Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues, and we have a distinguished panel with us today. And uh, the first is to introduce Kate Rader, who's uh, in the League of Women Voters, and, as, and I, no one has done more uh, to improve voting in Vermont and, vo and voting issues than, than you, and I want to compliment you for Thank that, you. for the leadership you've given. And uh, Sophie, I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm Sophie Bettman Carson, and I'm here with Bill Doyle on Vermont Issues to talk about current affairs in central Vermont. And Kate Rader is a wonderful advocate in the State House for the League of Women Voters, and that was where I initially ran into you. And I had been prodded to join, and I've always been a little hesitant. Um, due to my own personal insecurities, I suppose, but... We're I'm, such a scary bunch. Yes, no, I'm delighted to have you here, and I'm hoping you could talk to those of us in the community who are interested and maybe a little shy about signing up for the League of Women Voters and what your activities are and what your experience was to get you into such a wonderful league. Okay. And just to follow up on, on the introduction, Kate, um, talk about some of the things that uh, the League is working on and, and it's very, some of the things you're very proud of. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but to get people over the fear of the League of Women Voters, I don't remember the, exactly why I joined where I did or when I did. I do know, I lived in Ann Arbor. I was not a member then, but I was very much aware of the League and what they did with their voter guides and that sort of thing. Uh, I joined when we moved to Massachusetts in 1979. So I've been a member since 1979. What I found in the League, in the first place, it gives me confidence that I wouldn't have otherwise. If I have to make a call and ask someone a favor or, or advocate for an issue, it I'm much braver when I say this is Kate Rader with the League of Women Voters mm. because that, that gives me a credential mm -hmm. that just Kate Rader doesn't have by herself. Uh, through the League's work and the friends, I've, I've made lifelong friends mm. in the League, lifelong, lasting lifelong friends across town. And, and now I have friends not just in my own League but from going to meetings, out of state meetings, I have friends in the league all over the country. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and those two things, for me personally, are, are what I got most from the league. So um, the league was founded in 1920. Actually, it was founded a few months before the 19th Amendment was passed to educate the newly enfranchised women because they knew it was coming. They had worked the suffragists. It was suffragists who had founded the League. Uh, they knew it was coming. They had worked for 72 years, uh, which is one of the reasons it's so frustrating when people say they're not interested in voting. But that's, that's a little aside. Uh, we, were, we register almost everywhere, and when people say they don't care, they're not interested, it just well, only 40% of Americans vote. Is that the right statistic? Something like though? that. I mean, it's Earth a thing. stunning few who make the decisions for the many. So I'm, I commend you for stepping up to the <laughs> league because this is important work. It's really important. So, uh, besides that, we do, uh, well, it was, it was founded by activists, and so we are still activists in in addition to our voter service activities, which I can get into, uh, we do study and have positions on issues at state, local, and federal level. Bill knows us from the state house, not us, not just me, but many others who have been there. We work very, very hard on getting same day voter registration. We have worked hard on campaign finance campaign finance reform seems to be stymied at the federal level, but uh, those are two 
important ones that we worked on for years. We worked for 10 years to get, to get same day voter registration. And, and so was, can you give an example of um, maybe an experience that you had with the same day registration that was very excellent or? Well, we were there at the signing of the bill and that was, <laughs> no, I, I remember I was, the town of East Montpelier has a, has a town meeting day potluck. Okay. And one day this young couple came by and they wanted to know if they could register to vote. This was town meeting day. Ah. This was a year before the bill passed. Oh. You know, and no, it's too late. It's you too can't, late, you can't. yeah. They came ready to participate in town meeting and had to be turned away. And that is now no longer true. That's great. That's great. Now you were talking about doing registration for people in the um, state jail system. Does that go federal as well or just? local jails? Well, they vote in federal elections. They can vote, yes. So Maine, Maine and Vermont are the only two states that allow felons to vote actually while they are still in prison. There are other states who allow them to vote again after they have served their time. There are states who do not allow felons to vote ever again if they are convicted of a crime. That's pretty common, I think, right? I think it's pretty common. Yeah. I don't have the numbers. I want to say something like 36 states, but I don't. That's, I can't, can't back that up. And is there a league in the system? I mean, is there a league of women voters in the federal system or in the local state system that you know about? or Not that I know about, no. That's interesting, though, that you guys are able to get in there and shake it up a little bit. I well, think that's we're, great. we're we hope it, hoping to expand that. We've, we've been working on it for a number of years. We did, since Maine is the only other state that has, allows prisoners to vote, I, we did contact them and ask them if they do that. And their, in their case, she says, uh, it's NAACP that uh, does the in, in prison registration. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'd say that the League of Women Voters has many accomplishments and uh, over a long period of time. But would you mention some some of the accomplishments that um, you put right up front more than others? Well, right up front, motor, motor voter, which passed was it seventies or eighties, when you where you could register to vote when you uh, oh, yeah. got your driver's changed license. your driver's license. Um, that was under, oh God, that's terrible. Reagan? I don't think so. Douglas? Let's just pass on that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the league was at the signing, the, the, when the president signed that, that wh whoever he was, <laughs> mm -hmm. when the president signed that bill. So that was, a, that was a, big, a big one for the League of Women Voters. I was, I was, um, laughing about it because in my experience it was very much like that. I got my driver's license when I was 18 and my father said well now you get registered to vote and then you can go get a job and then you'll be you know part of America. So I'm wondering if that did make a big impact on the I don't know voting outcomes. I don't know and we would have to whether Certainly, there are statistics there. What happened to voter registration after it passed? But uh, I don't. I don't have them. I whether any, you know, like whether Jim Condos might have access to those statistics. For, certainly for Vermont, I would guess. But somebody would have to got, dig down into the archives. I suspect right. it, was, it was long enough ago. That well, just on that point, uh, what are some of the issues that uh, have been accomplished by the League of Women Voters? Or that you remember and, and, and other issues that have, the League has uh, been very active in, in past legislation? We have been active um, here in health care and we have not been wildly successful but not for lack of effort and we're still working on that, working on the universal primary care. Uh, we work on uh, the environment, we're working very hard now on clean water. Mm -hmm. We would really, really like to see permanent funding for the cleanup of Lake Champlain 
funded this. Any day now would be good. Uh, voter rights, again, in Vermont, that's, uh, we are spared having to protect our, at, for now at least, protect our voters from uh, suppression, but in states around the country, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Maryland, oh, any, Georgia, uh, the National League and State Leagues have worked very, very hard uh, in the field of voter rights. How, how have other states been involved in the suppression of voter registration? Well, the League was part of uh, this the suit in, that covered, I think, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Maryland uh, gerrymandering suit. Uh, the League was one of the plaintiffs in that suit that uh, was lost because they said, unless a particular, I believe I said, unless a particular voter had standing, that it didn't affect them. And so that, we were waiting and waiting, waiting for that Supreme Court decision in June, and then it, it was it sort of deflated our, our balloon. So. Oh. You mentioned gerrymandering. Can you give some illustrations that the president had passed of Vermont's approach to gerrymandering well, and, and also the, na the nation, any national laws? Uh, Vermont, with only, one, with only one representative, does not, there is no opportunity for gerrymandering because it's one district, the whole state is one district. Uh, I think what's happened, I think Maryland and Wisconsin, I think what they do, how it works, is they can define districts so the population, they decide the districts by who a particular group, group is going to vote for. And so they can put all the Democrats in one urban district and cut, and the Republicans are cut out. And so there are fewer, of one, I say Democrats, one in urban areas, it usually is the Democrats that are in urban areas. But they can define a district so they know how how the vote is going to turn out. Uh, and that happens often when the legislators, the state legislators, are the body that does the redistricting every 10 years. Uh, one of the things the League of Women Voters did in Oregon, probably at least 50 years ago, they worked on getting a nonpartisan redistricting commission passed and it was passed there's a there was I was there 30 years ago or so and the state museum has a, a room and it has uh, commemorates the league's work on redistrict and there's a big table in the middle of the room with all the counties in Oregon and you can play the redistricting game and you can define oh define the congressional districts for this for the state that's a wonderful show. project. So, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, Vermont itself, every state does their own uh, redistricting for, yes. for state elections. And maybe you could just share with uh, us the, uh, some of the advan advantages, uh, uh, not only advantages, but some of the uh, progress that the League has made uh, in, and Vermont's made in terms of voter participation. Voter participation, of course, we have worked very hard traditionally on voter registration. September is voter registration month nationally. Yesterday was National Voter Registration Day. Uh, the League did a lot of voter registration this, this month, not all of it on the 25th. We register new citizens to vote upon their naturalization. Uh, and in the last two years, we have managed to have League members at every naturalization ceremony in the wow. state. Uh, w we were at the State House on September 11. There's one annually on 9-11. Um, and we registered about three quarters of the people who were naturalized, that, which was a record for us. <laughs> we, we had enough people there that nobody had to say, yeah, buy you. yeah, yeah good, <laughs> good, 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 right. 
Uh, <laughs> yesterday, we registered voters in partnership with Phoenix, Phoenix Books in each of their three uh, outlets. On Monday and tomorrow, we have and will be registering prisoners in uh, Newport and Springfield. We have registered college students would really like to expand that. Uh, we have... Are you doing state colleges and... Oh, we don't care. UVM? Anyone? Any, yeah. College yeah. campuses? Uh, in Northeast Kingdom, they, they worked with uh, <coughs> the now Northern Vermont yeah. State University. Uh, Southern Vermont College, uh, Norwich, uh, um, and we keep plugging along. We table, we register people at public events wherever we can. Mm -hmm. uh, that pretty much covers our formal voter registration drives. Uh, we do, as you know, uh, host candidate forums. Uh, we have one scheduled for October 18th in Waterbury for the Washington State Senate candidates. And that'll be all female, or it's every open to every candidate? Is it? It's open to the to the to the candidates. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it, it would be in this case, it would be Ann Cummings all by herself, and we we don't do she's that. She's interesting. She's interesting, <laughs> but these are, these are forums. These are debates. So it's a real debate. Essentially, yes, yes. And you guys sponsor it, it? Yes. And do you usually have a good turnout? I mean, we should drum this up. This sounds well, really Well, here we are, Great. drumming it up. Yes, <laughs> it's going to be at 7 o'clock on October 18th at the Waterbury Municipal Building, the Steel Hall in the Waterbury Municipal Building in Waterbury. Great. Uh, the other thing, we don't have, unfortunately, the resources to do statewide candidates at this time. But what we will be doing through our outlets and our website is we will be promoting all the, any candidate debate or forum that people come to us at and they would like us to publish it. We will do, we will do that. Talk about the period when the voters can no longer register to vote for this election. Oh, there is none. We have uh, election day uh, registration. You can register at the polls. You can register online. You can register by mail. Uh, at the post office? You can still? No, 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 no. Oh, no. no, no. I mean, you can Send it. mail it in. Register right. early. You can, from 45 days before the election, you can go into your clerk's office and, and, and vote. I shouldn't say red vote. You can vote. But yes, you can register to vote on election day when you, when you get to the polls. That's other great. states have, other states may have deadlines. Other states may have deadlines. I think something like 14 states now have have uh, same day registration registration at the polls. I mean, as you know, Vermont's been leading by example. You would think that would catch on. You would think, but uh, there were before. It it was a long time. They only just got this through in Vermont. Vermont did not. This was one that Vermont did not lead by. But I was an election official in Minnesota in 1984. They had election day registration then, there then. And they still have it? They still have it. And, but you're saying not many of the states actually have it. I mean, you would think it would become law. It's a you huge would think, tool. Yes. I, I would think. That you would think. <laughs> talk, about the, talk about voter turnout in Vermont and, and uh, what role that the league, of, league has taken over the years for tr voter turnout? I, I'm afraid I don't have statistics for voter turnout. It's reasonably good. It's not as good as Maine that had same-day registration. Minnesota, which has had same-day registration since the 80s, has leads the state in voter turnout. Uh, I think Vermont is better than average, but we'll see what happens with this election because this is the first this is the first one that since they have had same day registration. Well, there are a lot of elections, uh, um, issues coming up in this present, current election. And uh, uh, so, you think the, the issues, are there any issues that would tend to make the turnout a little bit stronger or less? 
Let's go on. I think the issues that may make turn out stronger is President Trump. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of inviting the league to step up a little, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Begging, I would say. So can you mention a little bit about the education fund that you guys have put together? Oh, the together? education fund uh, was established about 2000, I think, uh, with part of the proceeds from a legacy left to the league by a Central Vermont member, actually. Oh. Uh, they give. It's a 501c3, which means it's a charitable organization and contributions to the Ed League of Women Voters of Vermont Education Fund are tax deductible. Uh, we give three or four scholars, thousand dollar scholarships a year based on need and, and recommendations in an essay. Uh, need in the essay count more, more than the recommendations as a committee of five who make that decision, and it's a $1,000. Uh, and is it towards specific it, it, they can education? Use it, it's, it's, they can use it, it's for their, presumably for their college education, it's to high school seniors. Oh. But how, what it's spent on is not, we just give them a check for $1,000. thousand bucks yeah. towards their education. We, and we, all our other uh, voter education uh, mm -hmm. materials that go through the education fund. We had the Citizen's Guide, Maybe Bill remembers that the Green Book that was all about Vermont government. Government. We are now working on digitizing that oh. so that it will be available online. We do this voting in Vermont, which tells you everything you have to know about where to register, how to register, where to vote, how to find out if you are registered, uh, who you're voting for. Uh, we are handing this out to anybody who wants them. Uh, town clerk's office, libraries, at all of our voter registration events, we are giving these away. So. And before we leave, we could, each of us could pick up one of those. Yes, I happen to have a supply of them in my tote bag out there in the hall. Okay. <laughs> now, Doug, the league is on, uh, very interested in campaign finance. Can yes, talk we about are. Campaign finance? Yes. We would really like public financing of, of uh, political campaigns. I think it's... But that's a, long <laughs> that's a long view, yes. We have... Do you, uh, do you really think it's that far away? I mean, it seems like the most reasonable way to boot Trump's campaign it's in It's awfully shins, right? hard for people to give up their funding. They're not going to vote against... But it becomes so complicated. I mean, these, I mean, isn't Phil Scott, this is terrible, but isn't Phil Scott engaged in financial contributions from opioids, which is something that he's completely opposed to? I mean, they've got the poor guy in a pickle. And this is something that could be avoided by public funding. Yes, of and, and, our and own politicians, interest. elected officials complain that they really, really hate the amount of time they spend, which is about 30 hours a week, raising money. Obscene. But. And what, I mean, what are the, the footholds that you have achieved in getting that accomplished? Do, do you have a couple? We worked on the bill part of on uh, spending limits, contribution limits, and they run into First Amendment, you know, where the money comes from. They, right now, I think in the legislature, they uh, have been working on limiting contributions from corporations, mm -hmm. and they're meeting with, with resistance. Uh, I mean, it was a big battle, I remember, but the outcome oh, yeah, you of were it is there. just so stunningly ridiculous. I mean, really <laughs> impressive. So I'm really grateful you guys have set forward so to change that. You ladies. We, it's <laughs> can, you, can you make reference to other states that may do it somewhat different, campaign finance differently, or? or uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that, but, well, Maine, Maine, Maine right. uh, has worked very hard on, on public financing of campaigns, and they have run in, they, they have uh, 
initiative there, uh, what they call the voter interest or well, no, th th they can they can vote on you know referendum initiative where you can ah. pass laws. The 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 people that can pass laws, and they they they've got a cute name for it, but I can't, which doesn't come to me right now, of course. Uh, and that was defeated, and then they brought it back through through initiative, ah. and. I think the latest thing was that there was some sort of typo in the in the legislation, and the governor won't sign it, and they won't pull. He wouldn't have a special session to get rid of the typo. He, so they ran in to the governor was the biggest obstacle to their campaign finance. And we do have referendum in the initiative. To to what degree is Vermont involved in the initiative and referendum? Vermont does not have. Initiative and referendum. Hmm. It's not one of the states that does. And there's never been any interest in, the, in those issues? That the initiative not by the league, not by the league. Uh, okay. My personal opinion, uh, even as frustrating as it is sometimes, and you, it sounds like it would be a wonderful thing to have, I don't think it's necessarily a good way to, to write law. Hmm. It's better to have the legislators be able to At discuss least, yeah. it and work it through. I think that's true. Uh, Vermont or California rather has initiative and they have ballots that are this long and how the how how the the issue is worded in on the ballot and is, is are you voting yes or no and you have to figure that out. It's uh, it's a it's it seems to me better in theory than, than maybe it can be in practice. And when they states they do have the initiative that trick would be who writes the question yeah. that, that the voters will, will, will reply to. Well, thank God we have such access to our legislators here. Oh, yes, that's wonderful. It, it is. is. It is. It is. So it looks like we only have a, a minute left, and if there's something that we've left out that you would want to mention? I would like to mention for our local audience that the, the local league has worked with the library, the College Harbor Library, for a couple of years now uh, on a series of programs. Last year we did one, five programs on the First Amendment, oh. and this year we're doing it under the umbrella of constitutional crisis with a question mark. Uh, we had one program, Jim Condos talked about voter security in this, in the age of hacking. We will have one in January on gerrymandering. Uh, in May we will March, we will have one on liberalism and conservatism, what it has meant historically and, and where we are now, and on single issue politics and whether it's important and whether it, what its impact might be. All right, Sophie and I thank you for giving your thank time you. and thank the you. work that you do and the, the work that the League does. So, and thank join us. Thank you so much for coming. This was really wonderful. Okay. Dispelling my fear of the League of Lady Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so. you.